Oh my gosh, I got completely booted off. I don't know what happened. Hey, Teresa, can you come back? That was like the weirdest thing. I've never had that happen before. It literally kicked me right off my live. So I apologize for that. I don't know what happened. Oh my goodness. That was really crazy. I'm hoping that I'm on my grandma's on a mission page too. I think so. That was really strange. Let's check something out here real quick. Oh my goodness, goodness. Weird. All right, let's go see if we're we're live in the Grams on a Mission page. That was really off the wall. Okay, so it did. Oh, okay, so it started over. Oh my gosh, so now am I going live in both in two different places? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, well that stayed on, so I'm just gonna keep going then. That was really crazy. I've never, I've not ever had that happen before. So, well, we'll just keep going. So anyway, now I forgot where I was. Oh my goodness, I was so distracted by that. Oh, so the feelings and the emotions that were coming from a place and a space of, oh my gosh, how did I attract this again? So, and this was a person who I perceived to be in a high authority position and really followed a lot of, and really did and does have a lot of great advice, just not quite the person that uh, was expected. And so, and then there was just a lot of horrible things that were being said about me. And I was like, oh my gosh, what the hell? Like, I am so not that person. And I really didn't know how to come out, out from that. I mean, it's like, I knew I have the solution, but I wasn't, I wasn't clear in the direction of where I wanted to go and who to confide in and to get through this moment and to get to a new space and to live into a new day. And and so I reached out to, uh, a f so we never met in person. I have been following this person on social media for a while and I really respect and admire him. And I was brought into this group, hashtag rise and grind two years ago and just been meeting incredible, incredible people. Glenn Lundy is the founder of that group. Anyone is very welcome to come into that group. Yeah, I know. I I'm back on Teresa. So let me let me message her real quick and uh, see what happens. Hang on, hang bear with me. There we go. Maybe she'll pop back in. That'd be awesome. And anyway, so I've been following a lot of people in this in this room or in this page. So again, like I said, so you are more than welcome to come there. It's hashtag rise and grind. And I've been meeting incredible people. And these people have been going, uh, I've been meeting and learning and listening. And a few of my most favorites in there, again, is Glenn Lundy, Danielle Delgado. She's another one. I actually uh, sent the link over on my grandma's on a mission page from her. She does Friday night live. She's just amazing. Thank you, Teresa. Yeah. I don't know what happened. It like literally just, cut, it, it just cut me off. I don't know what happened. So maybe Facebook wasn't like what I was doing, or maybe they have a time limit on my lives now. I don't know, but we'll figure it out as we go along because we are solution oriented people, right? And that's what was happening is I got stuck in the problem and, and I, I just was unable to really figure out the solution because I became so uh, despondent, depressed, like from this whole situation. And I was like, what the hell, you know, knowing, knowing, knowing though, that there's light at the end of that moment. And again, life happens to us or happens for us, not to us. And is how we react to the situation. And so I took some time just to allow it to be reactive and then decided that I wanted to be proactive and during that time, Teresa, as we were talking about, oh, it has this wonderful, you know, uh, opportunity for me. And 
I, I couldn't even, I couldn't even function. Like I couldn't even think about it. I, I was like, I can't, I can't do this right now. And I use the words can't. And, and I was like, okay, this has got to stop. Like I cannot stay in this piece of my life where it's totally sucking the life force energy out of me. Like this is not conducive for anything. It's not good for me. It's not good for the people around me. And so I made a decision to find the person that I felt that I was most comfortable with, that was relatable, that I could talk to without judgment and that would hear my story and maybe have a solution for me because I wanted to, I wanted somebody to bring to me those solutions. And I didn't want to go around talking to everybody about my whoa, whoa, woes. And because I've already done enough of that, like in the beginning when all this happened and, and oddly people that were, that I had talked to, but I had already known about what was happening long before I did. And they, they were just giving me my time to do what, you know, I was required to do and to figure it out and to move out. Cause don't we just sometimes, you know, people will have an opinion about somebody or they'll discuss someone with us and we have formed our own opinion. We're like, yeah, that's not going to happen to me. Well, that's <laughs> happened to me and I know better. That's the thing. I know better, but it still happens. Like I said, I put my trust in somebody who I thought was a high authority and just very well respected and come to find out it was not the case at all. So I'm going to challenge you that no, regardless of who you think is in high authority and who you feel is like in, you know, uh, big in the circle, Google them and look for reviews and look for book, good and bad reviews. I mean, people are haters regardless. So there, you will always have those people that will talk smack about you. And then there's always going to be those ones that talk really great about you. But in this case, had I Googled long before and really paid attention to some really high extreme uh, things and maybe even reached out to the people that had made those reviews to find out what was going on, I could have saved myself a long hurting lesson. However, uh, saying however, it, how, it really assisted me though in just one more big piece golden nugget to be able to share this information with you on what to expect and what what you can do to avoid yourself from being in situations like that. So there's that. So again, we'll just stick to the affirmations this morning. Like I said, my daughter gave this to me, an amazing, loving, strong, happy, selfless, and graceful, which brings me to, so I had to figure out a person that, and I love Teresa, she's on here. She's my, she's like my, like an amazing, amazing accountability partner. She's an amazing, amazing, like I, I think of her as my best friend from another country, it feels like. Uh, she lives in another state, not another country. But she is lives in God's country, like absolutely. So make sure you follow her on, you know, on our social because she's amazing. And anyway, so it, it wasn't something I knew I could talk to her about because we have such a connection and we've shared so many stories. And I was like, nope. She, she's not going to be the one. And then we have another mentor that uh, we both have. And I was like, nope, don't want to talk to her about it either because she knows me a little out of personal too. And I really wanted someone that who was outside of my circle, but very highly influential to me. And so I reached out and interestingly enough, this book has been creating a lot of challenges for me as well. And one of the biggest things for me is I don't have a plan. I don't have a financial plan. I don't have, I have vision letters written. I even have a vis, vivid vision letter, but I don't have like the, I don't have the vision set in a place where, um, that I would look at it and then follow it going backwards. And so being in the hashtag rise and grind group, Len, Lendy's group, like I said, there's a guy in there and his name is Frank Lopes and he has written this book called the seven minute setup. And in this book right now is I've been going through the seven minute vision, the seven um, month vision, seven week vision. And now I'm on the seven year vision and it was really pulling me in just all these different directions. And, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, like my head's like exploding and, and I said, you know what? I'm reaching out to Frank. 
that's it. I'm reaching out to Frank. Frank doesn't know me at all. We've never met in person. Like I said, I've watched him though. I've been on, he does, um, does Tuesday Night Lives. He does, he's in the automotive industry, but he does, has a lot of really great, great content. And, and I'm not on every single time, but I've been on enough to know that I really respect and honor him. And I thought I'm, I'm going to reach out to Frank. So sure enough, and I get daily messages from him and I get daily messages from Glenn Lundy. And so I texted him. I said, Frank, are you available to talk with me today? Like right now or later this evening? And he texted me back and he's like, gave me his number. And he said, you can reach me at this number and gave me a time. And so the day before yesterday, we had a very, very, very deep conversation. Guys never met me. And all I did the entire time was, first of all, to start off the conversation, like I barely could even ask how he was doing or anything because I was so immersed in my own crap and that I I had just right off, I didn't even realize that I had been bashing myself right from the beginning of our conversation. And then I went into what it was that was, you know, really just keeping me from moving forward and it's been my past my past has been keeping me in a place in a frozen state of oh my gosh you know uh i i didn't want to have any conversations with high authority people as i didn't want anything that i said or do you know or anything about my family or anything like that to hurt somebody else's business or to taint their you know, reputation or how would they want anything to do with her? And I really went to a place of I'm not good enough and what I have to say doesn't matter and all these things. And it was, if there was one conversation that I would have loved to have recorded, it would have been that one that evening. It, Frank was amazing to talk to. He listened and I cried. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not talking like, like just, I'm like the ugly cry, right? And that made me feel even worse. It was like, ah! You know, and Frank was just very, very, just very caring and very uh, loving. And he, but also at the same time, not even, but, the, and the same thing that, that I knew about him was, oh, he, he'd be all up at, he would give it to me straight. And he wasn't going to just barefoot through, you know, the flowers to get to me because I'm not that kind of person. Like, you got to tell me what the stuff is. Like, you got to give it to me straight. And I knew that Frank could do that. And that was why I reached out to him. And it was the best decision that I made all week. And I can tell you that after that conversation, we were on for like an hour and a half, almost two hours. Like, he, I, I can't even wait to tell the story. And I'm so excited to, to interview you, Frank, in just a few weeks. Uh, I want to wait. I just want to get, and yes, I am putting this together because I don't want to just throw it out there. And it would have been a great, great live video, though, had I been ready to share something like that. Like, that would have been the best. And had I recorded it, I could have remembered everything you said. Here's what I do know, is that when I was done talking with him, like, I had felt like there was this mountain and he had talked to me about mountains too. Danelle Delgado talks about two mountains and the bridge that goes uh, in between. And I was actually underneath that bridge and just hiding there, not, not ready to be on either mountain. And when I do climb the mountain, there was boulders that just kept falling on me and just pushing me down. And he talked at great length about that with me. And he also talked about, and we'll, we'll get into more, the more the logistics when we have a conversation, I'm going to, because I would definitely going to interview him, is it was, it was so amazing because he really assisted me in getting through a very, very trial time. And I am I feel like it was a major breakthrough for me. And so as all that lifted, like there was just, hey, Kari, nice to have you here. So as all of this junk lifted, I felt so like, a, like the boulder was lifted off my shoulders and I could breathe. And I could, I felt like as I've been down, like I seriously, my body has shut down. Hey, Terry, it has been shut down. I have literally like been sleeping. I haven't been able to concentrate. I haven't been able to focus. Like I don't want to have conversations with people because I just felt like I was just blah, 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 you know, and like who wants to listen to negative people? 
And I definitely do my best to be as positive as possible. But some days they're just down days. And I was having that moment. And then I was also reminded to my pastor a long time ago. You know, you guys have all heard my stories. I don't want to get into all that right now either. Uh, but he told me it was a Job moment. And when I read the book of Job, I was like, I'm not Job. Like, I don't believe that as much as Job. But here's what I do know. I do know, though, that I do get up every day. And here's here's the big thing, is it to be grateful. So Danelle has a book called uh, The Joy. I choose joy. And I put on here a victory journal. And every single mentor that I have, every single person that I know of a high authority, they all talk about this and having gratitude. And even when I was feeling my worst, oh, excuse me, feeling my worst, I been writing gratefuls in this journal, whether I believed it or not, I put it in the journal. And I am so grateful to have reached out to Frank this week because he, like I said, he really assisted in helping me get to a new place. And one of the biggest takeaways, hey Dominic, so one of the one of my biggest takeaways from, uh, and there were many, 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 but one of the biggest ones that I took away too from having this conversation with Frank was knowing and learning that a lot of a lot of the pain that I've been feeling and a lot of the pain that I've been holding on to, and I didn't even realize this because I talk about my story. I talk about 10 years ago when my son died and my husband left me for, you know, a girlfriend in our group of friends. My daughter had, you know, a miscarried. I had cancer and my middle son was in prison for unintentional murder. And I thought that though, that sharing those stories were healing. And, and what happened was though, is I had a phrase that says, I'm so tired. Like I'm so tired. And the tired was that I, my brain was keeping me from the pain, the pain of of having any more pain in my life. So sharing things or uh, sharing a big piece of my life with y'all that's going to be coming up has been painful for me. And I have I felt enough pain. I don't want any more pain. And Frank helped me to realize, though, that those are champion victories and not that I haven't heard that before, but maybe I, or I just haven't been in a space to really receiving that. And so it was taking this story and really sharing with others that no matter what it is you're going through, that you decide to get through it, you can. And that is so true. I, I, we have been on a journey and I have been in different jobs and going up and down and, you know, like just really haven't had the plan. And so in my gratitude journal, journal, journaling um, this week, having talked with um, Frank, he also said that once now that I have released this and I've let it go and I've talked about it, that other doors and, and are, will be opening and it will happen so fast, you know, faster or slow, but just to be open to those. And that's so true. So last night, like I said, I shared the link this uh, last night from Danelle Delgado and she talked about, I wasn't ready for this. And I was, and I wasn't ready for it either. I wasn't ready for my son dying. I wasn't ready for my, my ex-husband to leave me for a girlfriend, a group of friends. I wasn't ready for my daughter to lose her baby. I wasn't ready to have cancer. I wasn't ready for, you know, being able to tell all these things to my son who was in prison. And I wasn't ready for any of that. Like, and who plans for that? Life happens. And what plan do we have in place that we have something to fall back on? So, like, I was introduced to the culture of people that lifted me and inspired me and, uh, you know, helped me get out of that, that really dark place at a time when I didn't even know where to go. And so I really feel that, you know, me, Shelly Jean, being a grandma's on a mission, that is my mission to share with you that you can overcome. You know, we hear these things, you are an overcomer, you are an achiever. Well, I am an overcomer. I am a champion of victors. I am in a place where, like I said, right now, reading, Frank has me going back doing homework and reading uh, chapters 35 through like 100 or 85 or something like that. But it's all about the vision. So what vision do I have for myself? Am I going to just, you know, 
do we keep ourselves going in a place of just winging it? I've been a winger. That's been, so I'm a recovering winger. I want to plan. I want, uh, I want to know what it is I'm doing, where I'm going and the how will get, the hows aren't important. It's just having that vision. And so it was very, very clear to me this week that, you know, I'm not the person that uh, wants to live paycheck to paycheck. I'm not that person. I, I have a really challenging time, you know, people telling me what to do. I've never been that way. I, uh, you know, my parents even were never, I've never been the one that you tell me what to do and I'm going to do the opposite. <laughs> this is kind of how it was. But mine, mine came up from a situation though, too, where, you know, I lived in a very abusive household and I got sick and tired of being beat around and told what to do. And, and I left that situation. So when I look back on the things that I've walked away from, and this is another big aha moment, I walked away from every situation in my life and walked into something else. And this situation where people walked away from me, like my husband walking away from me, and like all these different things, my son leaving me, like he died, like that was a, a path of walking away from me. Like I wasn't used to to that situation. Like I wasn't used to people walking away from me and it pained me so deeply that I did a complete 180. So then I became very, very aware of other people's feelings of not wanting to hurt anybody and just really uh, losing myself in all of this. And so talking with Frank the other night, again, somebody who is completely doesn't know me, uh, really unbiased as to what was going on, just really challenged me to a lot of new thoughts and and really brought forth a lot of really great, you know, ideas of possibly how that could have happened, why that happened, and how I'm s still in a situation on creating things in my life that are still that way. So moving forward, and breaking through and getting through to the other side, right? So now I'm up on top of that bridge that we talked about those two mountains and I'm ready to climb. I am like, I'm feeling free from, from you know, that boulder dropping me down underneath the bridge. I'm standing on top of that bridge and I'm, I'm ready to go. And, and a big piece of that is right here with you right now is bringing you with me. And those that are having challenges right now, I, I can promise you, you are never, ever alone. There's always somebody that can, is ready and willing to, you know, lend a shoulder, lend an ear, you know, just listen or have, or be that person that can, you know, assist you in getting, you know, to the next step. And, you know, I've been a recovering alcoholic too for 36 years. So for me, it's one day at a time, one step at a time life does begin again. That's my hashtag. Life does begin again. And I'm on a mission and I'm on a mission to just keep going and change lives, change my life, change the trajectory of my family's lives. And, you know, just being connected and surrounding yourself with the right people is the best way to do that. And also, again, just to write gratitudes, just be grateful for the things that are happening, whether they're, they're so, and whether they're good or bad, Again, like I said in the very beginning, they're happening for us, not to us. It depends on how you want to react to that is how it's going to change for you. So again, I'm Shelly Jean. I'm a grandma's on a mission. This is Saturday, uh, March 27th. My birthday's in three days on Tuesday. I'm going to be 61. And I definitely, definitely know that 61 is the year that is going to change for me. I'm not going to say that anymore, that I'm never, ever again just saying it is going to happen. And so I'm going to follow the steps that Frank has in this book. You can get it at Amazon and or you can go to Frank Lopes. Uh, I believe it's franklopes.com. You can follow him on Facebook or any other social. And he's just an amazing man to follow. And so is Glenn Lundy. Oh, and here's the other thing. So Glenn Lundy also has an ebook, a free ebook for you. You can go to www.themorning5.com. Again, that's www.themorning5.com. And you can download that free ebook and it's uh, new habits. So it's not, I wasn't ready for this anymore. Like Danelle Delgado says, it's what new habits can you create to change the, the direction of your day? 
and starting out with the morning five is, is a great example of that. So I appreciate you hanging out with me this morning and I so look forward to seeing you again next Saturday. Actually, I'm going to come on Tuesday. I forgot about this. Oh my gosh. I am interviewing the Glenn Lundy and it's my very first really big, huge interview. I'm super, super excited about it. Love to have you join me. I'm going to be coming in at Grandma's on a Mission live. I'm going to bring uh, Glenn on on that or maybe a Zoom. I haven't quite decided yet. And But I am going to be here live with Glenn at 10 o'clock Saturday morning or Tuesday morning. Central time is my 61st birthday and I'm bringing my new year in with a bang. So I'm bringing it in with Glenn. Glenn is absolutely amazing. I'm honored to have this interview with him. He said yes because I asked. And if you don't ask, you don't get right? So just remember that. Make that your motto for today. You create a great day and life does begin again every single day. And thank you so much for being here. Take care, everyone.